Good morning, Royal City Community Church family. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, we'll bring a sacrifice of praise, you know. Jesus is worthy to be praised and magnified, regardless of how we feel. And uh, we put him above our feelings, amen? amen. And uh, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that as we, as we praise you, you inhabit the praises of your people. And when you're there, there's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost and righteousness. And we just love you, Lord. We just celebrate you. This is all about you, not about us. And uh, we just set this time, time aside for you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, you are good. <laughs>
praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing out. Uh, we worship you again. I don't think we're done. Amen. He's good. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. Worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you for who you are.
Hallelujah. Good things. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
we see in part. Hallelujah. We speak Amen. your promises, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you finish what you start. Hallelujah. Praise you. I know whose I am. Hallelujah. I belong to you. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. No more shame. Praise you, Jesus. We rejoice again in your goodness, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come to you, Father. Hallelujah. Come to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us the Father. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You're perfect in all your ways. We worship you. We magnify you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You have all the answers. Hallelujah. You have all the answers. And you reveal them to us by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Even before we say a word, Glory. 
there is more to you, God. We thank you that you are thank so you. faithful, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are so powerful, God, that you are above every other name. You are above all things, Father God. You are above all situations and circumstances, Father God. We surrender it all to you, and we ask you to forgive us, God, when we have been doubting you, when we have not been trusting you, God. Amen. We ask you to just realign our hearts and our minds so that we can, again, just trust in you, Father God, and focus on what you want us to do, where you want our minds to be, so that the words we are speaking are full of life, Lord God. They're full of hope. Jesus, that is what we want. That is what our heart's desire is, Lord Jesus. And we ask you to forgive us if it hasn't been this last little while. We ask you just to take us back, bring us back onto the path that we need to be, Lord Jesus, because we know that we know that you are not finished. You are not finished, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. magnify you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your voices. We praise and magnify our King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, the opportunity that we have to be in your presence. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, almighty God. Sing praises to your name. Oh, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We give you all praise and all glory and all honor to him who sits on the throne and under the Lamb. Oh, magnify and exalt and praise and worship his name. Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, I've, we've got a special uh, uh, treat today. I've asked uh, if Rocky could come and share the word of God today. Uh, just uh, praise God, thank you for the ministry gift he's given us in the person of Rocky Alviar. And Lord, I just pray right now, God, as he, as he, just, as he comes before you, you today, Lord God, and he opens up his mouth to share, Father God, the words, Father God, that are just, uh, are gonna pierce. Oh, hallelujah, speak to all those that need to hear this today. We praise and thank you for that now. Good morning, church. Um, Pastor David asked me to share the Word of God, so uh, I just want to thank Pastor David and Ross for allowing me to share the Word, and um, let's get into the Word, and let's believe God to touch our heart, to speak to our hearts, and to encourage us, and to build us up. And um, if you have your Bibles, this is a good time to turn off your cell phones, and uh, just don't be distracted from, the, from hearing the Word of God, and um, let's get into the Word of God. Just going to open up in prayer. Thank you, Father. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit. I just ask that you anoint my lips and speak to each heart and life. And we just give you all the glory. It's all about Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to be sharing um, my scripture here is Romans chapter 1, verse 17. And um, let's turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. And um, I just want to say it in another way, because when I used to read that, it didn't quite... Um, connect to my understanding. So it says again, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And um, you know, if we're going to live by faith, we need to know how to do it. And we need to see some examples of um, people who lived by faith. And um, if you're a believer, we're called to live by faith. And um, I'm going to read it this way. When I was studying this, I wrote it out this way. The saved ones will live 
by believing God did it. He gave them righteousness and will continue to give everything as you believe him, as you believe in him. He is able and will do what he said. Or you could say it this way. The righteous, the righteous ones will live by believing God did it. And it's basically talking about how it's not by our works, but God gave us righteousness. And the just shall live by believing in what he did and not by the works that we did. And we go from faith to faith. And the way we received and believed what God said about, um, about him, that he's the one who justified us. Uh, some translation says, um, other than it says the righteous, that some say the just, those who are righteous, they believe God made them righteous. And it's, it's really about believing what God says. I'm trying to kind of stress that point that we as believers need to trust in what God said and then continue to believe in what God is saying and saying and saying and all his promises. All of these, all of these things he said, we need to believe it. And that's how we enter in to those things. And that's how uh, it says, it account, it, uh, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. So we can be in right standing with God as we believe that he did it. And uh, we're going to look at some scriptures here. Let's look at, um, let's take a look in the Amplified Bible at uh, Luke. Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. And um, it says, I tell you, this is the Amplified Bible, I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? And um, in the Amplified it says, you know, we've mostly heard it commonly said that, will he find faith? In the Amplified it says, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? And uh, if you think about that, it says, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? And... and uh, makes you wonder why he said that uh, before Jesus comes back. Will he find faith? And uh, part of that reason is, you know, we've heard a lot of, we have lots of teaching on faith. We have lots of books on faith. Um, but faith is a rare thing. And that's why he said, will he find this kind of faith? Persistence in faith on the earth. And I want you to think about that for a second. And let's turn to um, Matthew. And this is in the Amplified Bible again. Okay, let's go here. Matthew. Matthew 13. And we're going to be reading verse 58. It says, this is from the Amplified, and he did not do many works of power there because of their unbelief, their lack of faith in the divine mission of Jesus. So it says, he did not do many works of power there. He didn't say he did none. I know sometimes people read it and they go, he couldn't do any miracles. Well, that's not true. It just, uh, if you read other translations, also it says, 
Uh, he didn't do many mighty works. Um, it's, uh, and here it says he did not do many works of power there because of their unbelief. And it wasn't because he wasn't able. It was because of their unbelief. Their lack of faith in the divine mission of Jesus. So we're seeing here that it was no problem for Jesus, but it was their unbelief. Will he find faith? And uh, let's turn to in the um, New King James. Let's see. In the book of Psalms. Psalms 78. Verse 41. So Psalm 78, verse 41, New King James. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. And... Uh, I'm going to read that again because we were just reading the scripture how he, how he didn't do very many mighty works because of them. And then in Psalms here, it says they tempted God. Some translations say they frustrated God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They actually limited God. So here in Matthew, they limited God because of their unbelief. And here, they limited God. And it says, they did not remember his power the day when he redeemed them from the enemy. He worked his signs in Egypt. And it goes through the whole scripture there, talking about all the awesome things God did. And they forgot. Memory loss. They forgot. Maybe you're watching. And today, you need to have faith for your situation. And I want to encourage you, you have to look back on all the things God has brought you through. He'll do it again. Don't frustrate him. And uh, don't limit him. That was the point of that there. Uh, let's go to the book of Mark. In... Uh, this is again in the Amplified. Thank you, Lord. The word is good. Matthew, Mark. Here we go. Matthew, Mark. <laughs> okay, let's read in Mark chapter 6. And uh, verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief, lack of faith in him. And he went about among the surrounding villages and continued teaching. Again in Mark, he talked about how Jesus marveled. He's shocked. He's marveled at their unbelief. And uh, I know you guys are familiar with the story when uh, the centurion, he marveled at the centurion's faith. He said, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel. And um, so I'll just read that again. He marveled because of their unbelief, their lack of faith in him. And he went about among the surrounding villages and continued teaching. So when Jesus teaches, his teaching obviously brings faith. And he's trying to build people's faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing, not heard, and hearing, continual hearing of the Word of God. And that works the same way for lies, by the way. If you continually keep hearing lies, hearing lies, hearing lies, you'll start to believe them. And there's only one source of truth in this world, and it ain't the news. <laughs> Surprise! It's the Word of God. And um, I just encourage you, 
meditate on the truth and the knowledge. You will know the truth, and this truth will set you free, whatever you need. Amen. Let's read in uh, Matthew. Here we go. Matthew. Again, in the Amplified. Matthew 17. Okay, we're familiar with the story. They tried to cast out the devil out of this, uh, this boy. Um, Matthew 17, starting in verse 16. And I brought him to your disciples, and they were not able to cure him. So, sometimes people today come to Jesus' disciples. That's us. That's the church. And sad to say, sometimes we weren't able to cure him. Or they weren't able to get the help that they needed, they were looking for. And that should have been there because they were uh, the disciples of Jesus. Um, and Jesus answered, O oh, you unbelieving, warped, wayward, rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation. Those are pretty strong words. You know, Jesus is straight up. I wonder who he was talking to. Because his disciples were around and they couldn't have enough power to heal a mosquito. <laughs> How long am I to remain with you? Can you see Jesus going, Oh, brother, giving the uh, rolling of the eyes. <laughs> He doesn't need all the time. But he's just like you and me. He was a man. And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him. And the boy was cured instantly. Verse 19. Then the disciples came to Jesus and asked privately, why could we not drive it out? And I know some of you are familiar with this passage. And verse 20, he said to them, because of the little, littleness of your faith, that is your lack of firmly relying trust, for truly I say to you, if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place and it will, re it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. And then verse 21, it says, but this does not go out except by prayer and fasting. And if you study that out in some of your Bibles, you'll see that's kind of italicized. That was added by the translators. And, um, you know, if you think it through, they ask, they're asking them privately, how come we couldn't do this? He could have just went straight to the point, oh, this one only comes out by prayer and fasting. So you can see how it was kind of added in there because he straight up gave them the answer. Because of your unbelief. And um, how many of you know Jesus is truthful? <laughs> um, to his disciples. And then, um, let's see. It's funny because we're in Matthew 17 here reading this story. And if you go back in Matthew chapter 10, he gave them power to go out to cast out devils and to heal the sick. And they were doing this already. They were manifesting power. And next thing you know, they find themselves not being able to do it again. And um, let's read Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Starting in verse 5. When the disciples reached the other side of the sea, they found that they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Be careful and on your guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves about it, saying, It is because we did not bring bread. But Jesus, aware of this, asked, 
Why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Oh, you men, how little trust you have in me. How little faith. Do you not discern, perceive, and understand? Do you not remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many small hand baskets you gathered? So again, he's talking about, he said, you know, uh, beware the, the leaven of the Pharisees. And then the disciples are, are talking about, oh, he, he's, he's upset that we didn't bring any bread. And Jesus is like, ay, ay, ay. He said, he, he, they just finished feeding 5,000 men and women. And uh, there's two times he fed, 4,000, 5,000. And now they're thinking, if we have no bread, I guess we're in trouble. It's like, again, just like in the Old Testament, they forgot what God just did. So um, we have to guard against that because sometimes we can be, you know, have a short memory of how many times God has delivered us, saved us, answered our prayers. And now today you're in a situation and you've got to believe God again. And you're nervous. And you're, maybe you're unbelieving. So here's a question. Will he find faith? And um, here's another question. Could you be around, uh, around a bunch of anointed ministries and have little or no faith? And here's the master. Here's Jesus himself. Do you think he had an anointed ministry? Jesus? And look at his disciples. They're still having little faith or no faith at all. So um, we need to take heed to that. Because you can go to church for years. Sad to say. And uh, not connect and have that living faith. Or you just start going through the, the motions. Will he find faith when he comes back? Will the Son of Man find faith? Okay, let's go to uh, Hebrews. Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, come on. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. There, this is from the Amplified. Therefore, beware, brethren. Take care, lest there be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart, which refuses to cleave, to trust in, and rely on him. That's powerful. Leading you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from the living God. And here again. He's calling it a wicked, unbelieving heart. And I know these seem strong words, but why do you think it is wicked and, ev and, and evil having a heart of unbelief? One, it shows the hardness of your heart. Two, you limit God from wanting to do good. He's not able to express himself to you and even through you. And that's God's desire to love people. We're holding back his love when we walk in unbelief. We're holding back his love getting to other people and getting a touch from God. Amen? Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 2. For indeed, we have had the glad tidings, gospel of God, proclaimed to us, just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith 
with the leaning of the entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. By those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. So this applies to us today. And actually there's some scriptures talking about learning from those whose carcasses who, who died in the, in the wilderness. And it says here, um, we have had the glad tidings of the gospel preached to us. You know, when you hear good news, just like they did, they heard good news, deliverance from bondage, they heard it, and it didn't benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. So many times people go to church, man, they hear lots of good news, but they walk away with no benefits because they didn't mix they didn't mix it with faith. And it uh, talks about Joshua and Caleb. They heard it. They heard the same good news. And they profited from it. So, um, I wrote here, Did you mix what you heard with faith? And you need to keep continually hearing the word of God. So you have something to mix your faith with. Mixing your faith that God has done it, and you'll be established in that right standing, in that righteousness, that God has done it. Hallelujah. I got good news. <laughs> Believe it. Mix it with faith. It's uh, in Romans. And uh, this is in the New King James. Romans. Romans chapter 12. And it's just halfway down the verse, but it says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That, that means you should think highly, but not more than you ought to think. But to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Some say the measure of faith, a measure of faith. The point of the scripture here in Romans, in the New King James, is that you have faith. So God has given you faith. And you're supposed to take that faith and mix it with faith what you hear of the word of God. Don't mix it with lies and believe the lies where, um, where you believe the storm is more real than the word of God walking on the water. The just shall live by faith. Will he find faith? Okay, let's go to Romans again. This time in the Amplified Bible. Romans Romans 10 verse 17 so faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ the Messiah so faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the preaching of of the message that came from the lips of Christ the Messiah himself. So faith comes by hearing what Jesus said, which is his word. You have faith, but faith comes by hearing, and it's continual. It's continual. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. And again, this is in the Amplified. Hebrews... Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. 
It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit, and of the joints and the marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. So his word is alive. His word is living. He is the living word. Spend time in the, with the living word. Spend time with Jesus. Spend time in the word. You know, this is the bread of life. This is our daily bread. Man shall not live by bread only. So you need bread to live, but it seems like everybody works just to get bread, natural bread. How much time do you spend working to get your spiritual bread, to provide for your spirit man? You don't want your spirit man to starve. Praise God. God God's word is good. It's alive. Amen. Um, let's go to Hebrews, again in the Amplified, and we'll go to uh, chapter 11, starting in verse 6. It says here, But without faith it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. And, uh, you know, you've heard it more. But without faith it is impossible to please God, for anyone who comes to God must believe that he is. So he knows he is, but when you come to him, you must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that earnestly, diligently seek him. You have to seek hard after God. Diligently seek Him. He's a rewarder. And what does He reward you with? With His peace, with His joy, with His healing. It's not, you're not working for it. It just comes as you're seeking Him. Because when you find Him, you find healing. You find peace. You find joy. You find victory. Amen? You find peace. You find wisdom. Praise God. And uh, we must come to God knowing he hears us. You know, the Bible says his eyes are on the sparrow. That when a bird dies, he knows. He knows. He knows uh, how many hairs are on your head. He's that detailed. He knows where you're at right now. He knows exactly what you're going through. And you need to know that. That needs to become alive. You need that he is there with you. He knows exactly how you're feeling. The Bible says he's touched with our feelings. He knows exactly what you're going through. But if you forget, and you don't believe that, you'll feel like you're all alone. And you'll just be drowned out by unbelief. So draw near to God. I'm almost done here. Um, I just wanted to mention, you know, our father in the faith, Abraham. And um, in Romans... Again, in Romans uh, chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 20. Um, so, Romans chapter 4, verse 20. It's talking about Abraham. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly, question, Concerning the promise of God. Okay, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, uh, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. He grew, he grew, he grew strong. It wasn't overnight. I'm not expecting you to have all this great faith. Just stay steady. Let it happen if you want to say naturally, stay in the Word. Keep hearing the Word. Meditating on the Word. Loving the Word. Believing the Word. And it says he was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Because when you're praising and giving glory to God, 
You're speaking his promises. You're hearing it. Faith comes by hearing his word, his promises. And then it says, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and, and mighty to keep his word and to do what he promised. That was verse 21. So some translations you've heard it said, uh, he was fully persuaded. I believe that's when his manifest. That's I believe that's when it manifested his his the promise of God to him concerning a child, and uh, it's a funny term, you know, fully persuaded. Some of you are kind of persuaded. The area of healing, prosperity, meh. You know, does God want me to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You know, maybe you're not fully persuaded with that. You can have what you say stuff that Jesus said. <laughs> not some word of faith guy, but what Jesus said. Jesus said, you can have what you say. And um, life and death are in the power of our tongue. Is that for real? Uh, the other verse comes to me. It says, we're going to be judged by every word that comes out of our mouth. Like every word. Is that for real? Do you really believe that? I mean, you can say you believe it, but all I have to do is listen. So sometimes it's just acknowledge in your head. I believe that. It's like, a, it's like demon faith, you know? It says the demons believe. They believe in God. <laughs> Actually, they believe in God. Uh, they are fully persuaded. <laughs> Those demons are fully persuaded. God is alive and his word is true. More than some Christians, sad to say. But anyways, Abraham was fully persuaded. And um, as he's giving... a. Praise to God there. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis. I'm almost done here. Let's go to Genesis. This is about Abraham again. And just trying to give you some insight. People with faith, who have faith, how they talk. They have a relationship. It's very important that you have a relationship with God. They spend time with this living God. And his word becomes living to them. It becomes alive to you. And um, let's go to Genesis chapter 17. And let's just go to, let's go to verse, well, well, I'll just read in verse 4. As for me, behold my covenant, my solemn pledge is with you. He's talking to Abraham. And you shall be the father of many nations. So God is a faith God. He speaks. It's pretty consistent in the scripture. When Jesus ministered, he did it by speaking when God created, he did it by speaking. When you're a child of God, how do you get things done? Just like the master, by speaking. Not speaking because I said so. <laughs> speaking because you got a revelation that life and death are in the power of your tongue. And verse 5, Nor shall your name any longer be Abram. So this is God saying this to Abraham. Nor shall your name any longer be Abram. High exalted father. But your name shall be Abraham. Father of a multitude. For I have made you the father of many nations. So. Before he even. Before you even see the manifestation, you already have to declare something. And, um, wow, was that verse? Um, yeah, so you got to think about Abraham here. He gets a name change. God calls him something else. He agrees to that name. He calls himself that. And you can imagine, everywhere he goes, what's your name? Abraham, what's your name? When he meets people, what's your name? My name is Father of Many Nations. What's your name? Father of Many Nations. What do they call you? Father of Many Nations. They're probably thinking he was old and senile. The guy doesn't have any kids. And now he is confessing. Father of many nations. And every time he hears his name, and every time he hears people call him Abraham, 
What do you think he's hearing? He's hearing, Father of many nations. And uh, he, he became fully persuaded. Hallelujah. And, um, oh, there's this one other scripture that's coming to mind about uh, God calling those things that be not as though they were, or, or, the, or as though they were. They already existed. And um, anyways, uh, just for time's sake, you know, I just think about King David when he was fighting Goliath. Same thing. He had a relationship with God. He's worshiping God. He kills the lion and the bear. And then when you read in, in 1 Samuel 17, 26, how he, how he lips off um, Goliath. He goes, I'm going to cut your head off today. You've defied the, the armies of Israel. And he wasn't just talking, you know, smack. He wasn't just talking like a big mouth. How could he speak those kind of things? Because he had a covenant with God. Or he, no doubt, knew the word of God, at least the Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible. And um, will he find faith when the Son of Man comes? Uh, uh, you know, with axes of everything around us, concerning the Word of God and great ministries and great anointed uh, men of God around. You can be around the scene, but still not have faith. You know it's true, but you haven't entered in. So um, that's all I have for you this Sunday morning. Praise God. I'm just going to close in prayer. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for the Word we just thank you for the light that comes from your word. We remember, we use our faith and we mix. We mix faith with what we've heard today. Hallelujah. And we can benefit from the promises of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your word is true. And I just speak a blessing over those who are hearing this word. Your word, your promises. And I pray, Father, that they would live by faith, knowing it's already done. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. And we'll see you, see you, see you next Sunday. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much to Rocky for sharing the message today. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I just want to quickly draw some announcements to your attention. Uh, just reminding you, of course, that we have uh, online prayer uh, that takes place every Wednesday evening from 7 till 8 p.m. Uh, it just continues to be a powerful time. Uh, anyone's welcome to come and join us if you can only come for a portion of that hour. Uh, just uh, I've set out the information weekly as to how you can uh, log on and be a part of that with us. Also, just to remind you that the... Um, the items to be continue to be brought in for the outreach to the Elizabeth Fry uh, Society, uh, the Women's Shelter. Uh, I know that some of those items have come in. Uh, we are looking to have the first Saturday in June to drop that off uh, between 1 and 2 o'clock. That will change, and this is sort of another announcement that I have to make too. Um, as you're well aware, the restrictions seem to be uh, look like, like they're being eased. Uh, I sent an email out this week that we would be having services, in-person services, uh, going back to what we were essentially doing last year from uh, June of last year uh, to November, uh, with uh, keeping it under 50 people that were allowed to be here in the sanctuary and of course the social distancing. Um, the date that they have said is looking like it would be the 15th of June, which is of course a Tuesday, so that would mean Sunday the 20th would be the day that we would have our first in-person service. Uh, but there was something that came out in the news today that seemed to indicate that might be a little earlier. Uh, we might be able to have it as early as the 6th of June. Uh, I'm trusting there's gonna be more clarity uh, coming up this week that I will be able to let you know through an email as the exact date that we're going to be able to come back together. Uh, if it ends up being the 6th, then we, uh, those uh, Elizabeth Fry contributions can be actually be brought in on that day. So uh, we'll just keep aware, we'll keep you in the loop as to what's happening. Uh, but uh, yeah, just be aware of all of that. But we're excited, finally, to be able to come back and have uh, uh, in-church gatherings. And, and we're looking forward to, as this continues, 
getting to September and have all the restrictions completely removed and get back to regular services. So uh, just thank you each one for being here today. Oh, before I go, I want to just pray over the offering. I forgot to do that. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to, to bring our tithes and our offerings into your storehouse today, Father God. We thank you that uh, your blessing is extended, Father God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the all-sufficient uh, uh, all one, our provider, Lord God. And we just thank you right now as uh, your people come to bring their tithes, their offerings, their first fruits, Father God. We thank you that your blessing is going to continue to flow uh, individually and corporately. We bless and thank you for all these things now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we trust that we're going to see you very soon. God bless you. You are dismissed.